I might have done that. It's in my uh, car. Oh no, my uh, nephew's wedding. He's here from uh, Australia. He's in the Marines. So he's going to get married. Yeah, real quick. Five o'clock today. Uh, rock Lodge. <laughs> Unica. Rise to our Avos and join me in our call to worship. We who knelt in the stable, let us come and kneel in the temple. Let our hearts give thanks and our hands rejoice. Let our spirits sing and our bodies dance. Oh, friends, enter the house of the Lord. We enter God's presence with joy and to be reborn. Hallelujah. So do so carefully and lovingly. 
The peace of Christ be with you all. And God be with you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us online and here in the building today. No matter what happens in the world, we continue to be the church, and for that we praise God. Amen. Please make your presence known online. Please leave a comment in the comment section or email Pastor Rich. For those of you in person, you'll see the blue cards in the, the little folder beat on the seat in front of you. Please fill that out and place it in the offering later on as it is passed in our service. If we don't have your email, we need your email so that we can stay in touch with you about the events in the life of our church. You don't want to miss the weekly events and inspiration email. And again, thank you for your support. It is so much needed. Please start or continue your commitment of tithes and offerings to this faith community as we tear down walls and build up love. Thank you for whatever it is you can do. And I believe Jolene has an announcement today.
join me, if you will, as we go to God in prayer. My Lord, what a year it has been. Yet you have seen us through to yet experience joy once again. Thank you for making us your God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Thanks for the new clothes you give us each Christmas, spiritual clothes of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Show us how to bear with one another and to forgive each other, just as you have forgiven us. And just when we thought we didn't need any more clothes, you came and clothed us with love, binding everything together once again in perfect harmony. May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. May we hear our calling to be one body, and may we be thankful. Thank you that we are rich, for the word of Christ dwells in us richly. Make us all teachers to admonish one another in all wisdom. Restore our joy so that with gratitude in your hearts, we will sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. We thank you for this kingdom place where all your children are welcome to grow in faith and in service. May your magical, mystical energy allow us to draw together joyfully time and time again Bless all those on our prayer list with healing as only you can provide. And now, my friends, with just a name or a brief phrase, for what else shall we pray? COVID patients in the hospitals. Eternal thanks for blessings received. Amen. Amen. Special prayer for Ralph. For the Jennifer. murdered family who lost their mother on Christmas Day. For all the homes who lost their young babies. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. For Babylon's condescendants. For, for the Martinez family. For those grieving in the holiday season. Yeah, they serve in our family. O oh God, unite us now in love and confidence that cannot be shaken. Amen. Amen.
You're going to say, praise the Lord. So let's practice that. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all the angels. Praise God, all the heavenly host. Praise the Lord. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded, and they were created. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters. Fire and hail, snow and frost. Stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees, and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Praise the Lord. Rulers of the earth and all peoples, young men and women alike, old and young together. Praise the Lord. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for the people. Praise for all the faithful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful job. <laughs> Please remain seated and hear this reading from Colossians 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, so which indeed you were called in the one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing praises, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Creator. I want to begin by uh, giving a great big shout out of thanks, um, especially to Debbie Bob and Scott Cameron for their worship decoration. So there was a mother chameleon who was so overcome with joy when her eggs hatched that her camouflage disappeared. Looking at her body excitedly, she exclaimed, I've become a parent. <laughs> Some people bring joy wherever they go. Others bring joy whenever they go. <laughs> May we all be like the former. Let us pray. Creator God of all things, as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, renew our joy once again. Not just brief happiness, but deep underlying joy. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, may we be encouraged, inspired, and rise up. In the life of a newborn baby, may we see possibility for ourselves, our communities, and our world. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, may we be bold, courageous, and willing to step out to bring a joyful message of all-inclusive love to all those we meet. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so to me, joy has always been Jesus, others, yourself. I want to say a word about what joy isn't before I start. Because some people think, well, joy, well, you know, that's just like the momentary happiness when you open a present and it's just what you wanted. Okay, that's joyful. But to have joy in your life means somehow even in the midst of your most sad, awful times, 
in the midst of, of times when Christmas is really hard to celebrate, and people are grieving, and they're scared, joy sustains you. It's still there. It may not be right on the lips at the moment, but it is there for you. It's a part of our faith that helps us get through. And so when we go to Jesus, yourself, others, let's start with the joy of Jesus. Christmas brings us all back to the crib of life to start over. Aware of what has gone before, conscious that nothing can last, but full of hope that this time, finally, we can learn what it takes to live well, to grow to full stature of soul and spirit, and to get it right. I think it's safe to say all of us can still do a little bit of growing. Amen? Amen. I'm growing up this way. I don't mean that. I'm talking about growing <laughs> inside. I can still learn and grow. There is a child in each of us waiting to be born again. It is to those looking for life that the figure of Christ, a child, beckons. Christmas is not just for children. It is for those who refuse to give up as we grow old and treasure the moments. It is for those to whom life comes newly and with purpose each and every day. For those who can let yesterday go so that life can be full of new possibilities always. Do we get it right? No, not always. We frequently get it wrong. There's that verse of scripture that some people just hate that says joy comes in the morning. And they're like, really, God, in the morning, I was planning on sleeping in, and can I at least have my coffee first? That's not the kind of joy we're talking about. Christmas is for those who are agitated with newness, whatever their age. And you know them. I see them here sitting in the pews today. People who have not yet let go of newness. People who know how to crinkle their eyes a little bit. People who know how to enjoy life. Life is for the living. For those in whom Christmas is a feast without finish. Lord knows we eat enough, don't we? <laughs> Christmas is a celebration of the constancy of change. A call to begin once more the German to the journey to human joy and holy need. Mary is venerated in many Christian and Muslim traditions. And Mary's story is about both Jesus and others. As Nader Boltzweber says, I wonder which was more difficult for Mary to believe that she would have a virgin birth or that she was highly favored by God. It's the same for us. I think some of us could believe easier a virgin birth than we could that God actually cares and favors us. And that's sad. That's a, a sadness that we don't have to keep because the good news is that that's exactly why Jesus came. To tell us all that we are highly favored of God. And I wonder if Mary could relate to this telling poem by Anonymous. She sat at the back, and they said she was shy. She led from the front, and they hated her pride. They asked her advice, and then questioned her guidance. They branded her loud, then they were shocked by her silence. When she shared no ambition, they said it was sad. So she told them her dreams, and they said she was mad. They told her they'd listen, then covered their ears. 
and gave her a hug while they laughed at her fears. And she listened to all of it, thinking she should be the girl that they told her to be, best as she could. But one day, she asked what was best for herself, instead of trying to please everyone else. So she walked to the forest and stood with the trees. She heard the wind whisper and dance with the leaves. She spoke to the willow, the elm, and the pine, and she told them what she'd been told time after time. She told them she felt she was never enough. She was either too little or far too much, too loud or too quiet, too fierce or too weak, too wise or too foolish, too bold or too meek. And she found a small clearing surrounded by firs, and she stopped. And she heard what the trees said to her. And she sat there for hours, not wanting to leave, for the forest said nothing. It simply let her breathe. We all need forest at times. We all have that feeling sometimes that we're, we're not enough or we're too much. Sometimes we just need to breathe and to draw on that wellspring of joy that tells us that we are highly favored. Psalm 148 that we heard and said back to each other this morning, let all that has breath praise the Lord. No matter who we are, we all need to breathe. <laughs> and the truth is, most of us need to breathe a little bit more than we do. The right kind of breathing, it's enough. <laughs> right? <sighs> the deep forest kind of breathing. And if we can find the simple joy in taking our breaths, and letting it out slowly and listening, then we will enjoy many moments that will take our breath away. Joy, Jesus, others, yourself, all are important to make up joy. In this life, of the feeling of being excluded or unwanted or ignored is sadly much too common of an experience. And we all know that rejection can come in many different ways and at different times for different reasons. But the anger and pain of being shut out is something that we all experience. As a society, we face many doors designed to keep out the other whoever the other may be. But joy comes when we knock at the Spirit's door. When we do it again and again. And when we do, it swings open to welcome us in, offering us understanding, giving us respect, letting us be just who God created us to be. There is so much joy in that. It is the kind of joy that no one can ever take away from you. Jesus said that we will have lives of abundant joy. And that joy is ours for the claiming. We just have to live into the kingdom of God. Jesus said that the kingdom could appear at any moment. And Jesus also said that the kingdom was already here and known. He said the kingdom was within you. The kingdom then, and that's why I call it such, kingdom, is very much like friendship. We already have friends. We know about friendship. We have friendship inside of us. But we also know that friendship can blossom unexpectedly. You meet someone, something clicks, you become friends. And the whole world is richer because of this new relationship. Jesus called his disciples friends. And Jesus had only one condition. 
Love one another as I have loved you. In other words, to be Jesus' friends, we have to be each other's friends. Conceivably, even lay down our lives for one another if necessary. Is it too much to imagine a world where everyone can be friends? You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. It doesn't require unanimity. Even old friends have differences of opinion. But we can treat those differences with respect and empathy. Few people actually choose their friends. Mostly, friends happen. But what if we were to try treating everyone as if they could become a new best friend? Set for yourself an attitude, a mindset of joy that chooses to see each new encounter as a possible friendship. This is a sample of the kingdom of God. It will bring you much joy. From Howard Berman, a joyfully optimistic poem called Candles for Christmas. I will light candles this Christmas. Candles of joy despite all sadness. Candles of hope where despair keeps watch. Candles of courage for fears ever present. Candles of peace for tempest-tossed days. Candles of grace to ease heavy burdens. Candles of love to inspire my living. Candles that will burn all year long. Amen.
So now, let nothing keep you from that joy that sustains. No, you don't have to bounce around and sing happy songs all the time. That's okay if you do, but you don't have to. But to claim that joy, all you need to do is allow God to remove anything that keeps you from communion with the holy, from communion with creation, and from communion with your brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Holy One, you are the Spirit that takes our breath away. For in our moments of deepest joy or despair or sorrow, you fill us with your breath. Holy One, thank you for being there, surrounding us with joy at all times. Be joy givers for others. Wrap us now in your spirit's tether as together we pray in the manner Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our Creator, in heaven and all around us, humbly be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Hear now the good news of Jesus the Christ. No matter where you've been on your journey, where you find yourself right now, or where you think you might be headed, our God is a God of love and forgiveness who runs to meet you with open eyes. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Holy One, as we prepare for another sacred meal, thank you for understanding us. We give you thanks and praise for these simple elements of fruit of the field and fruit of the vine in the many ways we receive and celebrate them in our diversity or fail to understand them at all. May they be our joy, our joyful soul food that sustains us with melodies harmonies throughout the year. Holy One, may your blessing be upon all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If our ushers and helpers would come forward, this is an open table. And for those of you at home, please share a morsel and enjoy God's blessed meal with us.
sumptuous that it satisfies the deepest longings of our soul. Keep us, God, well fed with your spirit, your love, and your joy. We ask your blessings on all that we have received and all that is yet to come. In the name of Jesus, the joy giver. Amen. Amen. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able for our closing.
joining in today's benediction. As Jesus Christ came into this world, let us also go into the world, giving thanks for life in word and deed, and growing in love for God and neighbor. Friends, another Christmas has come and gone, but let us keep the joy of the season as we start 2022. Rejoice! Yay, Jesus! Yay, Jesus. Amen! <laughs>